When I was just starting out as an optometry student, a professor asked the class to take out a blank sheet of paper and describe their own eyes. Easy enough. Most of us talked about the color, blue, brown, green, aquamarine, our sight or lack of it. And some of us got romantic and said that eyes were the windows to the soul. He looked at all these responses and said, well, nobody put the most important descriptor. Everybody here woke up today and opened two gifts, their eyes. I remember thinking to myself, well, that was a pretty cheesy line. But of course, as these things go, he was absolutely right. As my career got started as a resident at the Specialty Eye Institute in Michigan, I realized the difference a corneal transplant could make in a patient's life. One of my patients was an experienced pilot, and he asked me, why would you ever become an eye doctor? Because I was under some time restraints at the moment, I said the thing that was at the top of my mind. It was just something to do. Of course, I had to ask him why he flew, and he said something far more profound, because I want to see the world. As I looked at his eye, I noticed something truly heartbreaking. His cornea, the front part of his eye, was swelling to the point where he would need a corneal transplant, or he would have to give up flying. His official diagnosis was Fuchs dystrophy, the number one reason of many for a corneal transplant. After we discussed his potential options, I asked him, would you like to continue with surgery? That question alone is a privilege in itself, afforded to those in the United States and a select number of countries. You see, at any given time, there are 12 million people waiting for a corneal transplant, which means only one in 70 will actually receive it. So why are we so lucky? How come we can get a corneal transplant while millions of others have to become visually impaired? This access to sight-saving tissue is all due to the successful infrastructure of eye banks, which is what I want to go in depth with you today. Eye banks, similar to blood banks for blood, obtain and store corneal tissue. However, and I may be biased, the eye is a special organ. And medically speaking, the cornea is immune privileged. This means that tissue taken from a donor and implanted into a recipient is less likely to be met with rejection. Practically speaking, it means everyone is a universal donor for corneal tissue. The donor's blood does not have to match with the blood of the recipient. Age, eye color, and even eyesight are not factors. There are over 50 eye banks in the United States alone, accounting for 70,000 total donors per year. These 50 eye banks meet 100% of the demand in the United States. And any extra tissue is used for research purposes or shipped overseas. This level of success is a modern marvel and can and should be replicated worldwide. So how does it work? How do you get this corneal tissue? Well, the process starts off with something called the call from a hospital stating that an individual has passed and meets the preliminary criteria for donation. It is now that a countdown begins. 24 hours, 24 hours, due to the nature of the tissue, within 24 hours, an ophthalmic technician must conduct a series of very delicate procedures in a time of immense grief. This includes contacting the next of kin, obtaining consent, and finally recovering the tissue. Indecision during this time is the leading cause of why corneal tissue is not passed on. So what can we do? How can we make these 24 hours more worthwhile? How can we make it so millions of corneas are not buried in the ground when they can be passed on to the next generation. It starts with a simple conversation about organ donation with your loved ones. Of course, there are legitimate concerns involved. Where will my corneas go? Will they be wasted? Will they go off to the highest bidder? In 2018, the Global Alliance of Eye Bank Associations came together to form an agreement to address these exact concerns. The document is now known as the Barcelona Principles, and is designed to protect the integrity and altruistic nature of the donation process. I would like to highlight principle number seven, 
which encourages development of local and national self-sufficient services. You see, over 50% of the world's corneal tissue comes from just two countries, the United States and India. I'm here to tell you that this can be changed. And most countries can obtain the necessary resources to become self-sufficient and keep donations within their own community. Take the example of just one ophthalmic technician who went on a medical mission to Vietnam. After only a few weeks, he realized countless people were in need of a corneal donation. But there was a general lack of awareness of organ donation. So in 2008, he took four corneal transplants from the San Diego Eye Bank and assisted local surgeons who were interested in the procedure. He knew he had to get government and religious leaders on board to gain support for eye banking, so he invited a Buddhist monk to observe. After realizing the positive impact that this could have on his community, the monk pledged his own corneas. The surgeons took an interest and gained additional training at the San Diego Eye Bank. And in 2011, just three years after the ophthalmic technician's first trip, Vietnam opened its first national eye bank to provide care to the entire country. Stories such as this are possible around the world. But we need forward-minded people who can show communities the impact that donations can have. The thing is, when someone regains their sense of sight, they may be the ones directly affected, but the entire community and country, in a way, benefits. That person can now go on and seek gainful employment. The caregiver or spouse can now go on and live an independent life. The family does not have to rely on government aid. In fact, the iBank Association of America conducted a cost-benefit analysis of corneal transplantation, and it showed a $6 billion economic benefit in the life of these corneal transplants. This directly translated to federal and government savings of $2.5 billion in the healthcare industry. Essentially, the cost-benefit of establishing an eye bank is irrefutable, and the positive impact it has on its community is undeniable. Now, back to my patient in Michigan. He went ahead with the surgery and is now once again in the air to see the world. But he's just one story. Your cornea can go to Eric, a chef who needs help measuring out ingredients. Or Amin, a zookeeper who needs to keep track of various animals. Or David, or Joey, or Ryan, or Samir. Your legacy lives on through the gift of sight. So. If I can take some time to make a call to action, I would talk to government officials in countries who do not have this infrastructure of eye banks. This is a cost-effective, proven method to instantly improve the standard of living in your communities. I would talk to doctors such as myself. Our training gives us a superpower, not only to educate and spread awareness, but also to take our skills in places where it may be lacking. And finally, I would talk to anybody listening to this at home. The gift of sight is truly yours to enjoy, but also yours to give away. Pass it on when it's time. Thank you very much.